Hello and welcome to another inspiring episode of A Different Kind of Woman. A Different Kind of Woman is conscientious. Ever since the emerge of violent videos and games, there has been a debate as to whether these games influence behavior. On today's show, Video Games and Violence, we will be discussing this and much more. Joining me to discuss the topic is Selena Boyd, mother of two, and creative director of Fresh Health Mom and Baby magazine. Welcome, Selena. Hello. Welcome to the show. It's lovely to be back. <laughs> yes, lovely to have you here in the studio. So tell us, how much do you think violent images affect children? I think they really do um, affect children. Um, I think you have to be careful what you expose children to these days. Yes, um, it's definitely at different times from our generation yes. growing up. And the thing is, at first they'll get really scared by what they're seeing, mm -hmm. and then eventually they become desensitized to it. So yes. it's, it's really, you have to be careful as a parent what you allow in your home, but I do feel that it does affect them in a yes, big way. Yes, it does, it does. And it starts, because, uh, this generation is different from our generation yeah, growing definitely. up. So it's even a, a younger audience is introduced to, to the video games and such from a younger age. That's and right. even into teens, adulthood, even some married couples even tell us about, you know, problems they have in their relationship due to the amount of hours spent. So you can game. see across the board, yeah. From children to teens to adults, you know, there is a problem if you if you abuse it with the excess um, hours that you spend, yeah. you know, playing I, games. I, I think the problem is as well is that children are allowed to have these sort of tablets and iPhones and things as well that you can get the games on yeah. from an early age before they could even say their first words. And yes. that's, for me, worrying. And we are living in changing times. Yes, these um, games are, are, are so sophisticated now yeah. so sophisticated and and very real very realistic right. uh, a lot of the games then they can truly get carried away by it all yes so we really have to pay attention to this as parents you know not just parents but even um, teenagers adults we, we all have to balance because why was it created in the first place yeah I just feel that this is a new generation coming up mm -hmm. um, and, and a generation that is um, just influenced by what they see visually now mm -hmm. and they're bombarded with it whereas we, we were growing up we didn't have so much things thrown in our faces yes. now it's sort of they're always online playing games it's and everywhere. It's, it's scary to think what's going to happen within the next 20 years to some of these young people and and how they it's, they're affected by this as well 20 years hmm. I'm just thinking closer to that yep. you know That's it. but we can talk more about this topic and we will but first of all we will check what the people on the street of London thinks. Do video games make your children violent? With the arrival of Pong in 1973, video games became a commercial reality. An industry report estimates that 80% of the audience for the Call of Duty series are male and 21% are aged 10 to 14. Going by the 18 rating on the last three entries, that means at least a fifth of the game's vast audience shouldn't be playing. The problem is, while regulatory boards like PG in Europe and ESRB in the US are doing what they can to inform people about age certification, merchandise connected to the game is being designed for younger children. The question of video games and violence remains controversial. A 2010 study linked a 20-minute gaming session to abstract aggression. In 2004, a murder case was linked to the computer game Manhunt by tabloids, with MP and Chair of Home Affairs Committee Keith Vaz telling the House of Commons, the parents of the victim believe that the perpetrator of this savage attack was influenced by the video game Manhunt. It was later revealed that the murder was a drug robbery. A 
A study of around 14,500 children born in the Avon area between 1991 and 1992 looked at whether children of the aged eight or nine were playing video games, what genres they were playing, and then using statistical controls looks at a specific measure of aggression at age 15 to see if there was any association between the two. Their findings showed a 19% higher chance of children becoming more aggressive as a result of a computer game. In 2015, Oxford University researchers interviewed just over 200 children aged 10 and 11 about their playing habits, including how long they spent each day and what types of game they preferred. They found no link between computer games and aggression, but found that children who played computer games overall did better in their exams. The same year, the American Psychological Association observed in an August 2015 policy statement that their research demonstrated a link between violent video game use and increases in aggressive behavior. They also observed a decrease in sociable behavior, empathy, and moral engagement. Let's find out what the public think. I don't know, I think it's when people grow up like their environments and stuff. I think ignorance, because if people don't understand other people, then they're gonna hate them. For my personal experience, I think it's uh, like uh, how you've been brought up, like a parental background thing where uh, you might have experienced your mother or like your father like uh, from birth. So I think that's for my personality, yeah, from my own opinion, that's it. Uh, mentality uh, and uh, anger. A lot of hatred and unresolved childhood traumas, I would say, yeah. Uh, anger, I imagine, yeah. So you're feeling angry? I think the same way people get, they get like impressions from everything they watch. So I think if you watch violent things, it makes it seem more normal and okay. I think a little bit because you have to be a certain type of person to actually then go out. But if you're in the right mind already, then you can distinguish between right and wrong and think, okay, that's fiction. I'm not going to go out and now do that. It's all about experience, to be honest. I mean, for me, for myself personally, I've seen loads and loads of like violent movies, and I don't really, I, I can't even fight, to be honest. I, I can't. So there's a thing where it has to do, it has to do with like the environment where you live or how you've been brought up or whatever. Yeah, but I don't think the whole game thing, nah, nah. Oh yeah, definitely. I do believe. I think you're gonna think you are in a dif different world. And you're going to think the virtual is a real life and after you're going to start to make something a bit crazy. I don't think so. I think, I think the media is, um, I think there's lots of different ways of expressing yourself and I think play, playing video games that are angry or violent doesn't, wouldn't affect you. Having looked at uh, the public's opinion about this topic, it shows like two different um, yeah. frame of minds they are because you have some of the the guys talking about their experience playing games that it doesn't have that effect on them, while others think that the younger ones it has a bigger impact because they don't know between reality and fiction. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? I think um, it does have an effect, to be honest, because. Your brain is a remarkable um, thing and you have a conscious and a subconscious mind. Yes. And we don't know what's going into our subconscious minds, but yeah. it does have an effect on us. Yeah. So when people are playing these violent games or they're watching violent movies, we don't know the actual effects that it's having, what it's doing to our minds and where, where it's going to show itself up it's as well. It's so true. So we have to be really, really careful what we What we inside. allow yeah. to enter and That's what we right. allow to remain That's there right. as well That's because it. day to day we we receive a lot of information yeah. we watch many things but it's what we allow to to stay That's there it. is also key but the younger ones it, it you know the younger ones three-year-old 
five years. It's it's scary. Yeah. Even the television sometimes can. And for me, I've got a three year old, and I've seen some of the TV programs that are on it, and they can be quite scary. Yeah. Um, and a lot has magic and mystic, you know, lots of things that for a three year old, I think it's a lot, but they're just being bombarded with it every day. Yeah. Um, but it does have an effect. And it's also about controlling, I think for the younger ones, controlling the amount of time yes, and right. access uh, that they have to, to these video games. That's right. Because speaking to other parents, um, they were telling me some of the problems that they had where the children can't sleep at night. Mm. They can't have like a proper um, rest because their mind... Still going. They're dreaming and acting out <laughs> the things right. that they see um, in the video games, as well as um, um, some of them are overeating yeah. um, because of this. You know, well, there's so many to, links there are researches that have been done as well. Yeah, it's known to have, say, like a hypnotic effect. Yeah. And that to me, that's the scariest thing. Yeah. I think media is, is, is good. Television is good. But of it's course. when you um, make it or you take advantage of it and make, say, for instance, you use the television as a babysitter or, you know, you put your child in front of, you know, a game. The iPad. For hours and hours and hours yeah, so you to can play get games. Done. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a parent. I know how it is. I know know that sometimes you want your time and it's so yes. easy to give your child the you know the, the iPad, iPad or to, to play a know, game tele- or yeah. something it's so easy to do it you think mm-hmm. yeah that's my time but you have to be careful you have because to monitor. they will just yeah they yes. can you know even if you put a child in front of the TV they yes. can as you said gain weight or you know you have mm-hmm. to be careful what you and it affects do. their studies that's as well it. many of them it affects their academic um um the outcome of their academic yeah. life. So, you know, they have to be, as parents, we have to be so watchful, so monitor our children. But half of the times, the younger ones, the parents are the ones that have bought the iPad, the phone with the games, but some parents are not aware of the games, the type of games that yes. they can download on it. Yeah. So they are also unaware of the of the dangers as well. So yeah. as parents, you have to get updated. You have to do some homework and research. What type of game is this? Yeah. Is this suitable for my child to look at? That's so it. all these things we have to question, we have to research, we have to do our part. Yeah. It's for me personally, it's just really knowing exactly what your child's doing all the time. And as you said, research is absolutely important. What's yes. this program or game teaching them? How is it going to affect them later on in life? Yes. Um, and once you see important. that it's it's having an impact yes. where they, they can't sleep, their studies are suffering, then you have to do something. You see their yeah. behavior is changing as well. That's it. That's it. They, they, you know, they're more angry, more aggressive. You know, mm. you have to take measures to deal with, with the situation and allow it to get out of hand yeah. where they actually practically do something to harm someone else and then That's you know it. can it. lead to to all sorts of complications later on but let's take a short break and stay tuned and take a look at what's next we'll be hearing from tech speaker writer and founder of digi enable liz hardwick and mummy blogger Roxanne Sasha Jennings will be joining us in the studio. If more women were designing games, it would be more stimulating. Welcome back on today's show, Video Games and Violence. We've been discussing whether there's a connection between violent video games and aggression. To find out more, our team met with tech expert Liz Hardwick. I guess I became a geek, tech geek, tech geek girl um, really early on, actually. Um, I got told that um, I... I couldn't do electronics because I was a girl. And I think that was, uh, it wanted to spur me on to kind of prove them wrong, really. Um, And now I'm really lucky where I'm running my own business. I've previously worked with really technical background. I've built radio studios for a living at one point. And 
now I can give back and be able to help other women either go into technology or those that are already in it to be able to help that way as well. I personally don't think that video games cause violence. I think it's got a lot to do with certifications of gaming, just like you would do in the cinema, you know, the, the age restrictions are there for a reason. And so if parents are, you know, 90% of parents are actually with the children when they're buying the games. And if they're buying the appropriate games for the age group, um, I don't think there's necessarily a problem. I mean, when we actually look at gaming, um, sort of 45% 45 of it is actually, you know, adults. You know, the average gamer these days is actually 35. So in terms of, you know, the violence that's attracted, I think we get to an age where, you know, you, you need to have that element of common sense, really. You know, if you're, if you're watching something, it's that understanding that it isn't necessarily reality. And once you've got, you know, got to 18, you know, you're making that decision for yourself, but then also... There's, you know, there's that element of the certifications for those people who are under 18. Um, I think there's lack of women in the gaming industries, but I also think there's lack of women in technology in general. Um, in the gaming industries, women in the UK represent 19%, uh, which is really low. The average in the UK for the workforce is 45% women. So, you know, we're really not hitting the bar at all in terms of gaming. Um, why? I think it's a multitude of reasons. In 2014, Gamergate happened. It was a big thing where there was um, lots of people calling out online, people who were being derogatory towards women in gaming, and also trying to, you know, make journalists that were being sexist and unethical in the way that they were broadcasting and writing their content, um, you know, and trying to make it a little bit more representative and, and diverse. So I think it's, it's got a bit of a bad name, uh, gaming, for, for being quite sexist in the industry. But things are changing, you know. I mean, we've got um, lots of women in gaming awards now that are being run by uh, New Bay Media. Um, there's also platforms out there that are specifically for female gamers to kind of interact with each other, you know, share ideas, um, you know, and be able to communicate. So I think times are changing, but I think there's a lot that, that we need to do to be able to get more women in gaming. There's about 42% of UK gamers that are actually female. So it'd be really great to get more females actually working in the industry. Um, the, the percentage of women actually working in the gaming industry at the moment is really low, but it's also even lower in terms of technical roles. So you'll find that women will be in more business development management roles rather than actually technical side of things. So what would be really great is if we can kind of support women into the more technical roles so that they're actually producing the ideas. Um, you know, if we've got more sort of female-led gaming environments, um, we women enjoy gaming differently than men it's you know we would prefer more casual gaming so you'll see that there's differences in the way that we game and so it would be really great for women to be at those um you know decision points where the ideas are coming coming up in the first place really because then they will be female-led then that's going to be more representative in the industry and we'll maybe have less Lara Crofts in the future and more uh, casual gaming that's for women, but not necessarily making it all pink and fluffy and going the opposite way as well. That was very insightful. I, I think what Liz did was give me a, a greater insight as to, as to video gaming and women input and technology and changes that are happening in the industry. So that was really inspiring. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, joining us, however, to discuss this topic is mommy blogger, Roxanne Sasha Jennings. How are you, Sasha? Welcome to the studio. Hi. So how much of a difference um, do you think we would see if more women um, were designing computer games? Like Liz said, um, I don't think it would be all pink and fluffy and, you know, with unicorns mm -hmm. and love hearts. I feel like if more women were designing games, it would be more stimulating. Um, and I don't think it would have violence either. That's interesting. 
What do you think? I think, well, um, as a graphic designer as well, I think women, they tend to do similar things nowadays to what men do. And I think they may, you will find some violence, but I think they'll know how to level it out. I think it is quite evident when you look at some of the video games that they are kind of designed for men, I have to say. Um, yeah. Because, you know, lots of times my husband wants me to play video games with him. I just don't have the time. <laughs> and um, also some of these games, he, he normally sticks to football and things like that. But some of these games, I think, are, are more designed for the guy. Is that mm. being really bad? I don't know. It's just no, my I think my it's opinion. true. Yes, yes. And how safe do you think the current licensing of video games is? So I think the current licensing of the games are safe, but I feel like with younger children, it's easy for them to get access to their older siblings' games. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that it's designed for a younger audience, in my, in my view. Um, the, the games, it's, it's really catchy for the younger ones. Of course, they have the market for, for the older. As the lady was saying in the video, um, Liz, she was sharing with us that 42% of, of um, women um, play, as well as, you know, we have a, a greater portion of the men that, that play these video games. Yeah. But I think it's also attracting a lot of the younger ones to play and do challenges and all of that. So I do think, um, more can be done, um, restrictions. But I think also the responsibility of the parents as well right. for, for their children, um, the younger ones, that needs to be monitored. But for the older ones, <laughs> it's, what, what yeah. are your views? My view is, because um, with the licensing on anything, whether it's mm. a film or a game, I have to vet it first. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, some of the movies I see or some of the, the video games, I don't feel they are appropriate for that age group. Yeah. But it's about the parent or guardian vetting whatever's coming into the home. Yeah. So I think that's really, really important. So that's my view on that. So what do you think about the toys that are designed today for younger audiences? Like Selena was saying earlier, some of them have a lot of um, magic with them mm -hmm. and I personally don't give them to my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm the same. It's, it's, I mean, in terms of the toys, you just have to really kind of look at the background. What, where does this come from? A lot of things are, um, you know, there's a, there's a history behind it. Of course. And when you really research it, you're, you're blown away. Yeah. It's what, what is the, this toy, what is it teaching your child? And if it's mm -hmm. no, of no benefit to them, then it has no place in the home. That's my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, I agree. Even uh, one of my colleagues at um, school wrote to all the parents that, you know, that the parents themselves need to pay uh, a, a greater role mm -hmm. in monitoring the things that they buy for the children, as well as what they allow them to, to play, what they look at. Yeah. So it's, it's quite interesting that they, when you, when you go to shop to, to buy a game or a toy for your children, you, your colors are influenced. That's right. And sometimes you go into the shop, I know I've done this, and the music is playing in the shop yeah. and you find your influence, the music and the colors and the whole advertising. Because you know when you see things often, all the time um, advertising, you tend to sometimes want to pick it up or try it out. But we have, always have to be watchful. We always have to be mindful. What's, what's behind all of this? That's it. What's the Why? message? Why? Yes. The message is Because there's always an underlying um, message. Mm. But we're going to take a quick break. So don't go away. Take a look at the interesting woman that will be joining us after the break. Next, we'll be hearing from Dulce Pereira, who will be sharing her real life story of how she escaped a gang in the studio. Um, I put girls in the hospital, um, I nearly stabbed a girl. Welcome back on today's show, Video Games and Violence. We've been discussing how more women in technology would change the design of games. 
Joining us in the studio to shed light on how young people actually get involved in violence is former rebellious teenager Dulce Pereira. Welcome to the studio. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I could, looking at you, I can't even imagine you being part yes. of a gang. <laughs> well, really and truly, I wasn't in a gang. What I, was, I, what I was trying to do was to get into a gang. Oh. So well, um, I tried to do everything. So everything that you, you name it, um, get into a fight with a group of people, go into school um, to fight different people, um, girls, um, I put girls in the hospital, um, I nearly stabbed a girl. Um, I've done wow. many things just to try and... To join a gang. Join. But, but what inspired you? I don't know, it's just because I didn't have nothing else to do. You were bored? I was bored, yeah. So I thought, okay, why not try a different lifestyle? Why not try to um, have different friends? So I wanted to show that I was a bad girl. Mm -hmm. So I went to that kind of... Wow, did your parents have any clue what was going on? No, my mom didn't have no clue. No wow. clue at all. So were you still keeping up with your grades? How was your schoolwork? It was rubbish, really rubbish. Um, I wasn't doing my homeworks at all. I wasn't even concentrating in class. I wasn't doing anything. I was just being a naughty girl. And mm. You know the saying when you get excluded and then you go to the teacher and say, please don't, don't exclude me, because if you do, my mom mm. will send me back to Africa. So okay. I'll say that to the teacher. So they'll say, okay, we, we won't tell your mom, so we'll give you internal exclusion. So I'll co wow. go home and go to school with my uniform, think, my mom thinking that I'm going to school and not, you know, going to school, attend classes and everything. But wow. I was internally excluded, so all day staying, not doing anything. Wow, you were really deceiving <laughs> your parents. They didn't yeah. have a clue what was going on. Wow. So that was really a difficult time, I would imagine, for um, you. But yeah. going through the process, you probably weren't aware no. that this was wrong, that you were hurting yourself. Oh, for the less your parents, you weren't thinking along those lines. You're just thinking that you want to be part of yes. this group, this Mainly gang. Mainly because of what I went through as well in life. Mm. So that's why I wanted to be, I wanted to show off mm. because really and truly in the house, I was very quiet. Yeah. I was this tiny girl that I couldn't speak. I was just hiding in my room. And mm. then outside, I wanted to show someone else to other people. So, yeah. So what do you think influenced that sort of behavior? Well, not at home, because mainly I used to stay in my room. Mm -hmm. And because I used to have video games and all of that, so I just used to stay there all day, just mm. playing video games. But there was times my mom used to ground me and take my video games. But that, okay. that wouldn't help at all, because I would go out and do different stuff with my friends. Mm. So drugs, this, a variety of stuff. So what did you do to get away from that life, mm. from, from the violence, you know, that you also inflicted on others, you know, from, from everything? How did you overcome all these things? Well, it, it was a part of me when I got tired. I thought, no, I can't do this anymore. How long did you, were you? doing this for? Um, since I was 13. Wow. 13, so I used to go nightclubs, everything, but I got tired of it and I thought to myself, okay, I need to change myself. I need to be uh, a good girl for my mom, you know? Mm -hmm. So I changed friendships. I went to, you know, I looked around to see if I could find any different friends that could help me be a different person. So I started going to college. I went uni, which I thought, okay, I'll never ever go to uni, ever. Yeah. So I went to uni. Um, I just started changing myself. And How did you get the strength to do that? I don't know, I just... Just wake up. up one day and just decided? I decided, yeah. I had to make a decision because if I didn't, I'll, 
I wouldn't be here today talking to you. Mm -hmm. Literally, I wouldn't be mm -hmm. here. I'll probably be dead by now. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is the decision I had to make, and not just that. Um, so you made the decision to avoid abandon that old life, the friends that you had, and then what other steps did you take? I started going with, you know, looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I started going around with different friends, like mm -hmm. I mentioned, um, and not just that. Uh, uni uh, helped me see what I wanted to do as well. Okay. And I also met met someone, which he he really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Now I'm nearly I'm nearly getting married next year soon, uh, wow. which is really good. Um, and also, I'm just about to write my own book about my, my life. Your experience? So, mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Brilliant. so... Well I'm, done. I'm on top of that now. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, we are really privileged to have you yes. in the studio telling your story because we all know that, you know, you can pretend, you can look happy, but deep down, you know, inside you're not something, something is a root behind this unhappiness. Yeah. You know, no one wakes up just one day and decide I want to be a criminal or mm. I want to join a gang, you know? So it's good that you took time to, to see and make that decision and you stuck by that decision. You didn't yeah. go back to that old life. You made a conscious decision to change your life, turn your life around yeah. and you did that and you just keep going. Yeah. That's really commendable. So we probably have so many viewers who can identify with this story or probably have, you know, children or family members going through this. What do you think that parents can do to prevent their children from getting involved um, in criminal activities um, with violence? What would I advise is, because some parents, they take out the video games from, from them. Don't do that because it's going to make them even worse. Um, what I should suggest is just for them to spend more time with them, quality time, go out, do different stuff, um, go to the park, mm -hmm. go shopping, go find out what the kids like to do. Mm -hmm. And just to just spend time with them. Yeah. That's, all. Yeah. That's all what a kid wants for the parents to spend time with that them. That quality time. That's what all. do you think, ladies? I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I think quality time is important. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said earlier, sometimes it's so easy to put your child in front of, you know, the television or a yeah. game. Because yeah. sometimes but, they're so busy. Yeah, yeah. You, you really want your time. But, you know, you my, what I personally do is between the time of nine to three every day, mm -hmm. I switch off social media, everything, mm -hmm. and I just spend time with my children because those times, they go very it's quickly. Precious, yeah. Very, very precious. Yeah. And, you know, time is, is of Separating essence. Separating that time yeah. is very important. That's it. Yes, That's yes, it. I agree. So I really hope that our viewers can take something away from, from your story that even if they, their children or someone they know is in this predicament, in this situation, there's a solution. Yeah. There is a solution to it all. You know, they don't have to continue down this path. Yeah. You know, it's very important to, as you said, make that clear decision and stick with it. Yeah. I no longer want to be a part of it. And you did something, you, you made a huge sacrifice yeah. by changing your friends. Yeah. And I know sometimes that's really hard for us it's to hard. do. It. Yeah. You know, I only kept one, which she's, she wasn't that bad, but mm. I kept that one because, yeah, she's, she was really one of good friends. But. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We, we we have to really think about this and see what's what's best for us. Yeah. You know, what kind of life do we want to live? Because we know if we go down that route, that gang life, our life sh mm. span is short. Mm. <laughs> you're not sure how you're gonna wake up tomorrow. Where you're gonna go? So it's important. You give us a lot to think about. That's so thank right. you so much for joining us in the studio. Right. We're going to take a short break, but don't go away. We'll be back with more on video games and violence after the break. Here's a sneak peek of what's coming up after the break. Next, we'll see our team at the launch of virtual reality art exhibition and take a test to see how competitive we are. I think life's too short to right. be boring. Yes.
Welcome back. Today's topic is video games and violence. There are so many great benefits to media and technology, including the potential to teach valuable skills. One incredible use of computer games technology is actually art. Our team went to find out more. I'm here to experience virtual reality at Gazelli Arts House. Let's find out what it's all about. So my name is Mila Skarova and um, what inspired me to find this gallery was, uh, this was what, six years ago now, was the lack of commercial art galleries which um, are accessible to a wide audience through you know, the educational program that we put on here, through the diversity of the shows that we have here. So that was the basis that, that the gallery was found on. Our opening tonight is Enter Through the Headset 2. It's the second part of a show um, which basically puts together or exhibits artists working solely in virtual reality. So this whole ins the whole inspiration came from uh, our online residency called Gazelio, which was launched in October 2015. So we've invited since then on a monthly basis artists working in digital medium. And Rebecca Allen is our joining artist now, the one that is our September resident. I'm here with Rebecca Allen. How are you, Rebecca? Very good, thank you. So tell us, how do you um, hope your exhibit will affect spectators? Well, I think virtual reality as an art form is actually something very different. The idea of immersing yourself in another reality is, is powerful. That's why I moved, I've worked with digital technology and art for many decades now, but with these new VR systems, you're able to, do, to truly immerse people inside another world. And it not only affects your visual system, but you can feel it in your whole body, which I think is a different way of understanding art. So tell us, what does it mean to you um, to be a resident at Gazelli? Well, they have a, a program where they bring in artists for a month, and I'm the artist for September. What I'm going to be doing is talking a lot more about the virtual reality work I do and putting up images and uh, not just of this work but I'll have images, VR images from another piece and hopefully it'll just give people more exposure to what artists are doing in virtual reality and women artists as well. <laughs> so tell us how different do you think the world would be if there were more women involved in virtual reality? Well, I've, as an artist, working in technology, different kinds of technology so long, I've been very concerned about that. And I've even made games um, with the in intention of not having violence. Because in fact, doing shooting things is a very easy kind of interaction. It's, it's to me, a lazy interaction. You can do so much more with interactive media in virtual reality and games than be violent and I think if more women were doing this we would see such different types of art forms coming from games and virtual reality. So I'm here with Jocelyn and Katil. how are you? I'm good, thank you. So tell us, um, how do you hope your exhibit will affect spectators? Well, the piece itself was originally made for a festival experience so it's supposed to be married with uh, live actors and an installation so in that sort of situation the experience is supposed to really confuse you about this world that we've created virtually and also the like the um, reality that you're in and how how the two mix um, so here it's obviously completely taken out of its comfort zone and it was never really meant to be in a gallery but now it's here so I'm not really sure what I want people to take from it but it's really nice to see what people are saying when they come out of it 
I'm here with Ruth Gibson, co-creator of Man A, which explores the relationship between figure and landscape. Tell us, Ruth, how did you get involved in it and how did you become a VR? A VR artist? Um, I started working with Bruno and Martelli um, quite some years ago, actually, a number of years ago. Um, and I used to be a dancer. And one of the things that I really um, enjoy about um, working in VR is the fact that you can make up worlds and the dance that's in the Manet project is all motion captured uh, dances and improvised dance. And if you're a visitor or a player or a viewer of the work, you can actually walk onto stage and you can be amongst the dancers and this really is a primary thing for me for for people to have different experiences and yeah and to be surprised and have a bit of joy and wonderment really so how important is it that artists embrace technology um i would say that i think it is important um to a degree i think because everyone especially like younger people are becoming so much more integrated with technology like half your life exists in this like non-existent place um, like say like the internet and stuff so I think it's important to consider it you don't necessarily have to embrace it I feel like if you force yourself to embrace it in a art form that you're not used to or say you're like a painter or something then it might take away from what what you're trying to say but I think it's important to have it in your mind as a subject and like a topic that is important um, and obviously really good to experiment with it. Um, but I think embracing it means more than just being like, I'm going to make a VR thing. Oh, I've seen this thing, I'm going to make a Facebook art thing. I think as long as it's considered and you embrace it, then it's still relevant and I think that's what art really is. And how important do you think that um, artists should embrace technology? I think it's very important and in this medium uh, that we're talking about, I suppose in many ways it's important that the voice of the artist is heard um, and the image is seen when actually VR is an, an uncontested space and is yet to be colonised. Um, unfortunately it could well be colonised by the big companies and because of that I think it's extremely important that artists um, have a say in this, this area. This is certainly an interesting use of technology and I'm inspired to see more exciting applications of virtual reality in the future. I find this really interesting, really uh, an interesting part of technology, how it's changed so much, but we can also embrace and learn from it. As we heard earlier on the show, computer games can increase our ability to cope under pressure and pass exams? Or is it that children that enjoy computer games are more competitive? Let's take a test to find out how competitive we are. So I'm just gonna explain a little bit about the rules. Every line contains two opposite statements, depending on which statement you lean towards the most. Agree strongly, agree, agree slightly, or neutral. First, the three for the first statement. So our first question is, I almost never plan things in advance. Do you agree? Disagree? Disagree, always plan. You always plan? Yeah. Okay, what about you? I strongly disagree. You strongly disagree? You strongly agree? <laughs> Great, <laughs> we know. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, <laughs> things go crazy on the set, but that's all right. We know in your personal lives. <laughs> some of us plan and some of us don't. <laughs> Our next question, I avoid risk or I enjoy risk. I Which one do you agree with? Because I think life's too that's short right. to be boring. Yes, yes. What about you? I enjoy risk. 
You yeah, do. I do, I do, I do. It, 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 for me, I know that I'm going to do that job 100%. If mm. I'm going to, if there's lots, you know, I, you know, if I take a big risk, so yeah. Yeah. And what about you? I'll be in between because I don't know. I personally don't know if I if I should risk it, if I should not risk it. So I'll be I'll be in between. Yeah. There's no in between. <laughs> But I know sometimes it's depending on the situation. Because yeah. yeah. some situations you, you will take a risk. Yeah. And some situations that, you know, mm. you'd be like, this doesn't make sense in, in taking this risk. It's, yeah. it's not going to be financially, you know, or whatever the reason yeah. maybe yeah. you'll think it through to see. But then sometimes if you don't t- take the risk, then how would you know yeah, whether sure. it would work out or not? Yeah. So sometimes it's worthwhile yeah. taking a risk. Yeah. <laughs> Probably after today's show, probably you would. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So our next question is, am I irrational or am I a rational person? Which one do you strongly agree with? I'm rational. I'll in go between. with rational as well. You're in between? In between. Why is that? It just depends on the situation. Yeah. You know, if I, say for instance, want to get out the house on time, I might ask my husband to come out and he's not ready. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I might be a little bit irrational. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least you're being sincere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our next question. Am I lazy or am I a workaholic? Which what? one do you strongly agree with? Work- workaholic. You're a workaholic. Mm. I work Same. a lot. I don't yeah. have... I, I, I think I spend more time at work than anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone here it seems to be workaholics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are not lazy at all. Yeah. That's good. Okay, but also we need to be balanced because if we are lazy it's not good and if we are workaholics then yeah. you know, that yeah. can also be a problem. Okay, so let's look at our next question. I can't think of anything new or original. Or oh, I am a creative person. Which one do you strongly agree with? I'm really creative, so I'm always thinking of new things. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I'm creative as well. I love to think of new things. So, yeah. It'd yeah. Well, well, I know with your businesses and so forth, yeah. it's good to be always thinking of new ideas, how That's to reach it. your customers and so forth. So it's good. What about you? I'll be in between. Yeah, in between. Sometimes yeah. you think of new yeah. and original ideas. Some, yeah, I have. I have those times, think and not think, so I just stay in between, not yet. (laughs) That's all right, that's okay. Okay, so let's look at our next question. I am easily persuaded, or am I an independent thinker? Which one do you strongly agree with? Easily persuaded at times. Yes. Um, Yeah, that's, I think, a little bit of my downfall. I'm, yeah, very persuadable. Okay. I, 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 I think differently, you know, <laughs> because the way you sound like how you deal with your, your, your child and, you know, your marriage no, and so, everything. Sometimes it's just how, you know, it's, I, I like to, I don't know how to put it, but if people come to me with a bit of a sob story, I'm sort of like, oh, really? They may, may, not, may not be telling the truth. Yeah. But I'm sort of a bit more compassionate on that side. Yeah. Bit, that's well, what they I haven't mean. given you a reason to distrust them. Yeah. So. But yeah. Depending on like what the this subject yeah. matter is. Maybe in between then, neutral. No, you can't sit on the fence. <laughs> is that a yes or no? Oh, okay. <laughs> persuadable. All but right. you think differently too. <laughs> What about you, Roxanne? I'm an independent thinker. I'm not easily swayed at all. That's yes. Good. Okay. I could agree with her as well. <laughs> independent. <laughs> <laughs> Very independent. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, the next question is, am I passive or am I a leader? Uh, I like to be a leader at times, but can't that go in the middle <laughs> <laughs> you like to go you like to fall in the middle sometimes right, yeah, you're a leader yeah. sometimes you're like no, a follower I, I, I am a leader I do you're like a to lead yeah yeah and now my daughter's taking on that as well That's she's really, leading she's leading okay what about you Roxanne? I'm the same mm. I'm a leader too and my daughter is exactly the That's same right. yeah I have to be both sometimes sometimes I decide to be passive sometimes I, be, I decide to be a leader 
So I, I have those moments, right, today I'm going to do this, today we have to do this. But yeah, sometimes I have those moments where I just sit down and just, yeah. yeah. So ladies, let's look at the results. The more A answers, A plus, you get, the more competitive this test suggests you are. Scoring very high on this test isn't necessarily a good thing and may mean that you need to slow down and relax a little. Well, yep. It's a good tip for us today. So unhealthy competition is the kind that stems from deep-rooted insecurity. It poisons our relationships at work, at home, and you fail to even recognize this. Sometimes we have to take stock of what is happening. On the other hand, when competition is healthy, it's a powerful motivator that can help us to get ahead and contribute more in life. Today you've heard our thoughts. So tell us your thoughts on today's topic on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or by emailing comments at dkw.me. Join us next week for another exciting and inspiring episode of DKW. Until then, it's goodbye.